Hello, welcome all my dear students. I'm happy to be with you and for many of you I know I will be a new face to you because this is the first day that I'm going to be taking class 9 English. And the topic that I've chosen today is a simple philosophy. I repeat, a simple philosophy that you will find it in page number 109 to 114. This simple philosophy is a part of a prose and here we will discuss about how a letter that had been written long back still applies to us very perfectly. And this is all about the protection of environment. We know that environment is degrading day by day and year after year. This letter had been written by a chief of a tribe. You know what is a tribe, right? So the chief of a tribe writes to the president who is considered or who was considered to be much more well educated than the tribals. But we will see the different mindsets of these two group of people. And this story will deal with how the tribals consider nature to be their friend who is so closely related with them, whereas on the other hand, we will also find the so-called advanced group of people who will just keep destroying the environment for their self-benefit without considering the future that is ahead of them. And here, I will not be explaining all the words in details, but I would also recommend you, and I strongly recommend you to take your books along with you whenever you study. This is what I have been telling my students every time. And though I am new to you, I'm sure the previous teachers also had been saying the same thing to you. Because you cannot do justice to a story without you looking into the text again. But when I say that, it does not mean that you have to keep looking at your book again and again every time I explain because well, while the explanations are going on, I want you to stay focused here so that your attentions will not be divided. And here, we are going to be discussing about an Indian-American chief. Here, we have heard of Indian-Americans or the Red Indians. So this group of people were considered and are still considered to be the Native Americans. You know what is Native, right? The person who originally belonged to America, but we know that they are becoming the lesser group or the minority in the present day, and so we know that many of the minor tribes are getting lost because of the colonization and also industrialization that is taking place. And the chief, the chief received a letter from the president that is President Franklin Pierce. You might have heard of that or you might not have heard of it, but he was a president in the year 1860. In those days, when he was the president, he wrote a letter to the chief of a tribe. And you know, we are all tribals. Most of the people living here in Nagaland are tribals. I do not have to be explaining what tribal is. And so the so-called advanced group of people wrote a letter and that letter was about buying the land. The president wanted to buy the particular land where these Native Americans were residing. He wanted to buy it and so he sends greetings. And as expected, his letter was in such a polite way that the chief of the tribe could not really understand at first because they were always considered to be the inferior group when they were, when they were in a, even in a group with the so-called advanced tribe. And so the chief really wanted to know the intention why he was addressed in such a polite way. And the president said that he wanted to have friendship friendship with the stripes and he knew very well that these people, this, this advanced group of people can survive without the help or without the friendship of the tribals. But he also understood the underlying message why this letter was given to him. It's because they wanted to get take the advantage of them. You know what is taking advantage, right? And so he knew pretty well that it is with another purpose. He, the letter was given in such a way that they wanted to maintain a good relationship, a good friendship. But he knew that there was another underlying message which was not revealed in the letter, but he understood it. And this chief of the tribe was so wise that he did not counter attack. 
he did not react in a negative way. He just responded to them in a very positive manner, in a very diplomatic way. And his letter was that, I do not understand why you wanted to be friends with us. And I'm sure that was for a good purpose. He went in such a way. And he did not say, I will not sell the land to you or I want to know the reason why you want to sell the land to get the land from us. And he made it very clear that even if I don't want to sell the land to you, I am very sure that you will come and get it by force with your guns and weapons because they have all the machineries that they need. And he did not even say he will not sell, but he did not even say on the other hand that he is willing to sell the land. And he said, but I do not understand why and how can I sell the land when it does not belong to me? See, this is also a strange thing for us. And even the chief said, my words will never set like the stars. So we know that in your science chapter, you have already learned that the stars don't set. When the sun comes up, it just loses its brightness. That's it, right? The stars will be there forever and ever. That's what we have learned. And they don't even set or they don't rise. Here, the chief said, my words will be there. And very truly, even today, we will know the importance of what he said some hundred years back. And the chief of the tribe wrote the letter like this. I do not know how I can sell the land when it does not belong to me. He considers the land to be the mother earth. And if you were to imagine how you are going to sell your parents, that's something unimaginable. Some of you might be struggling with the relationship of your, with you and your parents sometimes. But even in these trying moments, you never got any slight idea to sell your parents, right? So the same thing. He considers and the tribals consider the land to be their mother. And so he did not understand how the president could ask for their land for them to sell it to them. And he says, if it belonged to me, I would have sold it out to you. But it does not belong to me and I don't have any idea of what I can sell to you when it does not belong to me. He just presented in such a way. He said in the letter of the person, we are discussing about two letters together. I want you to know that, okay? I will also bring in the letter of the president as well as the letter of the chief of the tribe. And in this, he said, your letter said that you will be our godfather. You will protect us if we sell the land to you. And here he said, I do not know how you will protect me because he thought that God made everyone equal though you belong to different races. You know what are races, right? Especially people in this northeastern region, we belong to the Mongolite race. And so there are numbers of races around the world. And these people consider themselves to be of superior race as compared to the Native Americans. And he, he thought that and he had been living with the belief that everyone was made equal by God from the beginning. And when this president sent a letter saying that they will protect him, he did not understand this concept or this idea because to God, everyone is equal. And who and how and who can have control over somebody when you all are in the equal level? I'm sure you do not want to be controlled by a person who is on the same level with you. They might also be facing the same situation like that. And so he also responded by saying that, okay, you are superior to us. God has blessed you with all the machineries. He is trying to say even in a sarcastic way. And he said that God has blessed you with all the machineries so that you can destroy the world. And when we think of that, we know it cannot be like that, isn't it? God gives us knowledge, but it is for us to use wisely and not for the destruction of anything. That even without I explain, you have the idea in your mind. And the same thing was going on through his mind. And so he said, okay, you, you are more blessed as compared to us. So we will agree to sell it. But he also said that you have to teach your children because we consider the nature to be our brothers and sisters. He says that the flowers and the plants are their sisters and the animals that are found in the wild, the wild animals are like their brothers and they are all interconnected with one another. And so how can we break these interconnections when God has already designed all the creatures and all the plants to be living peacefully? 
and he also wrote so many things saying that the nature had to be protected but the whites that means the the so-called advanced group of people the whites do not consider the earth to be sacred you know sacred means holy right s-a-c-r-e-d so you don't consider the earth to be sacred but we consider the flowing waters to be filled with the spirits of our forefathers See, people living in the rural areas have a lot of strong connection, emotional connections with nature. We know that. So if there are also some people who believe in the supernatural powers of the nature, the stones, the trees or some certain places. And so the same thing was believed by these red Americans. And they say, we consider this place to be sacred and holy because it had been inhabited by our forefathers from generations that we do not know and we don't when we do not want to sell this land but you we know that when you ask for something from us it has to be given because whether we give it or not you will surely come and take it and he also mentioned that the native americans are like the mist in front of the morning sun you know what is mist, right? The waters, the water vapors that gets accumulated. Especially if you are living in the hilly areas, you will see that the lower parts of the land will be covered with mist in the morning. And when the sun rises up, slowly they get evaporated and they turn into air. This is a common sight for people in the hilly areas. So he said, even if the mist are collected in great numbers, as soon as the sun rises up, their power or their there are no more to be seen. And so he said he compared their tribes to the mist of the morning to the mist in front of the morning sun. And he said we are powerless. He meant to say that we are powerless when you come to power. And even if we resist, that would be a thing that is impossible. And that is the reason why he said that he stated their powerlessness in front of the whites. And he said, if we agree to sell our land to you, you have to teach your children to know that this part of the earth is sacred and you have to keep it pure and that you will not destroy it. He knew very well that they are going to destroy it, but he also wanted to make them understand that things cannot go on as they want. And he said that it has to be preserved so that even the whites, he is not thinking only for their tribe, but he is thinking for the common good of humanity. He is not only talking about the whites and the Native Americans here. He is also talking about talking to the whole of the citizens of the world. And he said that you have to preserve it so that you also can come and enjoy the freshness of the air that nature provides. If he were to write in such a way that it belongs to us, so you cannot spoil it, it would have been in a very ugly face for the whites. So he said, you also can come and enjoy. This shows that he has a big heart. He wanted the whole world to know that preservation of environment is very, very important. And when we look around, we see that the trees are being cut off. Deforestation is taking place everywhere. And it is all because of the industrialization or the advancement of modern technology. And he did not want this to happen to the place where they live. Because the cities of the whites, the cities of the advanced people, is all because of the destruction of forest. He did not mean that nothing can be done to the forest, but he also wanted to let the people know that unless these things are preserved, a time will come when everyone will suffer together. And so he mentioned all these things very well to the whites, saying that they have to preserve the environment. It is our brothers and sisters, we consider them to be sacred and consecrated from the rest of the world. And that is the reason why he wanted it. He did not have a selfish motive or he did not want to sell it to them because they are always overpowering them. It is because he wanted to save the whole of humanity. And here we see that the whites, the way the whites write their letter to them. He said, we will reserve a place for you and we will protect them. We see that tone of superiority, right? The tone of superiority where they consider themselves to be better than the other group of people. There are so many people like that. If you have accumulated wealth, if you have gathered enough wealth, we think that we are more powerful than the others who are not as rich as us. And so this is what the mentality of the whites are. 
They think that they can protect them because they are rich. But when we really consider this matter, it is not about the amount of money that you have. Of course, the money that you have right now will be powerful for a time being. But we also knew that money alone cannot save. It is nature. We get back to nature for every needs of ours. Consider the oxygen. We get oxygen from the plants. We have already been reading about this from our very younger days, young age from the lower classes. And we know that oxygen is released by the plants. And that is how we get the air to breathe every day. And here the chief of the American, of the Native American wanted to convey this message very clearly to the whites, to the president, who considered that their, their people are better than the rest of the world and so they have power to control everything that they have. And he also wonders how people can sacrifice the entire future of the world just for a development that will last only for some few years. And he really wanted to make them understand about this. Our story is quite vast. I will not be able to explain everything today. So the later half of the story will be done in the next class. I want you to keep following me every time we get into this English class again. Because without your cooperation and without your presence, this program would not be a successful one. So please keep that in your mind. Go through the text. If there are any particular words that you do not understand, get hold of your dictionary. And that is what you should be doing. For class 9, you cannot expect your teachers to explain every detail like you have been doing in your lower classes. And so you have to go through your textbook thoroughly and then only you will be able to do justice to the lesson. With this, I'm going to stop for today. I want to thank everyone for being patient with me.